Hi, Carl here for Pro VTV. Today, we are taking a look at the very exciting new camcorder from Canon, the XF705. Now, very exciting camcorder might be a little bit of an oxymoron for some of you. I mean, everyone at the moment is talking about large sensor cameras and interchangeable lens cameras, that cinematic style of camera, which are, of course, absolutely amazing. That's what we spend most of our time looking at on this channel and using ourselves. But there's very much still a place and a need in the market for really high quality fixed lens camcorders. And that is exactly what this is. It is essentially Canon's update to their hugely popular workhorse, the XF305. If any of you are used to that camera, you'll know that was a really solid, really dependable workhorse of a camera designed for the daily grind of shooting. And that is exactly what this is. But the XF305 was introduced way back in 2010 now. That is a camera that is very definitely showing its age. It's had a very long product life cycle. So this is a refresh of that same mentality, but designed from the ground up for a modern environment for 2018. In fact, some would say, probably myself included, would argue that this is not designed for 2018. This is designed for 2019, 2020. Because of things like H.265 compression, for example, this has definitely been future-proofed as a camera. This is a little bit ahead of its time, and we're gonna go into that in a lot more detail. But for now, We've got a very limited window with this camera. And so of course, the first thing we did was head out to film. Now, it being November in England, the weather was obviously not on our side. So we had a very small window to film with this and the weather did not do us any favors whatsoever. It's freezing and rainy out there, but nonetheless, we headed out to see what the camera could do. So let's start with a bit of a physical overview of the camera. The lens is a 8.3 to 124.5 millimeter, 15 times optical zoom lens. It's got three control rings and it ramps from f2.8 to f4.5. That focal length in a, in a 35 millimeter equivalent is about a 25.5 to 382.5 range. So it's a nice decent range, particularly it's quite nice on the wide end, it goes a bit wider than some other competing camcorders. Now of course that's in 4K mode, in 1080p you actually get an extra two times on the tele end, it turns this 15 times zoom range into a 30 times because you can crop in to that 4K image without losing any resolution whatsoever. And you can do that built in on the camera. So that's really, really convenient and effectively gives you a 30 times zoom range when you're working in HD. The footage is all recorded onto two SD cards, which gives you a nice source of affordable media. Some of the other competing cameras work with very expensive media. And so um, for a camera of this quality to be using affordable media like an SD card is really nice to see. You also get some great options for recording externally because there's a 12G SDI port and a HDMI port, both of which are capable of doing 4K 50 or 60p in 10-bit 422, which is huge. So if you pair this with a monitor recorder from Atmos, someone like that, you're gonna be getting 10-bit 422 ProRes files, which is fantastic. Um, it's got all the buttons and controls that you need as a professional shooter. The one thing I did find I missed when shooting with this is a record button down here. This is, you see this on a lot of camcorders, and to be honest, I don't really understand why camcorder manufacturers don't put another button down here. 
course, for handheld, which is what these cameras are primarily designed for, it doesn't matter. You're going to be holding it like that. You've got one record button here on the hand grip and one up here on the top handle for when you're holding it like this. But when it's on a tripod, it's really useful to have one down here. It makes a big difference. And I definitely miss that when I'm out shooting with the camera. But you've got all the main controls that you would need and all the ports as well. You've got time code, gen lock, ethernet, everything like that. And it's perfectly built for IP streaming as well. You can do IP streaming, you can do FTP file transfers. You can even stream in 4K H.265 HDR. So this really is future proof for the streaming world as well. The big new feature which we definitely need to cover is H.265, otherwise known as HEVC recording. Now this is the new compression method that is definitely the future for the industry. At the moment, a lot of our compression and video compression is based on H.264. H.265 is a new method which is about half the size of H.265, and that is what enables this camera to be able to, redo, to do such high quality recording, like 4K 50p in 10-bit 422, on a very reasonably low data rate to SD card media. That makes a huge difference, and it's definitely the future for the industry. One of the big problems with working with 4K files is that it has large file sizes. So storage space is always a problem. With H.265, it means that we can reduce that storage space that is needed for post-production that's useful, for delivery that's very useful, and streaming, everything like that. It benefits everyone to have smaller file size 4K. Now, at the moment, working with H.265 is a little difficult. The only things that we were able to open the footage from this camera with right now was either Edius or the paid studio version of DaVinci Resolve. Now that is going to change. Over the begin in the beginning of next year, we're expecting to see support from all the major NLEs on H.265 compression, particularly Canon's implementation of it because they're using that new compression method in combination with their MXF file wrapper, which is the professional broadcast file wrapper. And so it's a slightly different implementation for what we've seen from H.265 before, because we have seen cameras which record in H.265 before. We've seen it in GoPros, iPhones, DJI drones, things like that, but nothing really aimed at the professional broadcast level. So this is essentially the first pro broadcast video H.265 capable camera. And that is a huge deal and is a large part of why I say that this camera is a little bit ahead of the game really. It, this takes future proof to basically an entirely new level and is almost designed for the future, not for right now. Because for right now, working with H.265 may be a little bit beyond a lot of the target audience of this camera. But it's great to know that anything you invest in now is going to be very relevant in the future. There are ways right now of getting around that H.265 compression, if you so want to. Um, obviously, you can just convert all your footage, which is what we did. We just transcoded it all to ProRes to edit, which took a while to do, but retained all of the quality and meant that we were recording onto that SD card media. If you don't want to do that, you can record H.264 onto the SD cards, but that limits you to 8-bit 420. So you lose out on a little bit of color information. Or, of course, there's the exports, the um, outputs at the back. There's the SDI and the HDMI, which will send out 10-bit 4K 50p in 422. So pair that with an external recorder from Atmos or Convergent Design, anyone like that, you're going to be able to record 10-bit 422 4K ProRes files, which is a huge deal. So I think most people that buy this will buy something like the little... Atmos Ninja 5 and have that at the side of the camera as both a monitor recorder 
and means that you can get um, high quality files straight away into your edit without having to worry about H.265. But you can record internally as well. So you can have a bit of redundancy or future proof for yourself and record onto both the external recorder and the H.265 onto the SD cards at the same time. Despite the weather being so miserable, I was actually very pleased with the footage we were able to get from the XF705. I think the image from this camera is really lovely. That one inch sensor gives you lovely shallow depth of field, but Canon's dual pixel autofocus makes that just as easy to control as any other camcorder I've ever filmed with. This was just as easy to use and as convenient as any other camera that I've ever shot with, which makes a huge difference. And is of course the main reason that people use a camera like this. It needs to be able to be super easy and convenient to shoot with. One really nice touch is just how ready for HDR work this camera is. Canon have thrown the kitchen sink at this in terms of different HDR formats. You can use C-Log3 for normal log recording, you can use HLG or you can use PQ. And we filmed all of our footage in C-Log3, but if we'd wanted an instant HDR deliverable for say broadcast work, we could have chosen HLG or PQ to do that. And one really nice touch, which is actually one of my favorite things about this camera, is that you can record an SDR deliverable as well alongside a HLG or a PQ recording. So if you want to do, say, broadcast work straight to TV, you can record two files for every single clip. You can record one in HLG, for example, and then one for SD, so that for when you're in post-production, you can choose which file you're using for the HLG grade or for the SD grade, and it makes life really simple and really easy to produce content that is gonna be suitable for both HDR delivery and SDR delivery. That's gonna be so important over the next couple of years, and it's definitely one of my favorite things about this camera, it's such a good move from Canon. Like I said at the beginning of this video, fixed lens camcorders often get overlooked at the moment, but there's definitely still a lot of demand for a decent modern fixed lens camcorder capable of everything we need from a true 4K HDR production. And the XF705 ticks so many boxes for that camera. Anyone who does any sort of fast turnaround work, news gathering, any sort of factual um, TV work, anything like that, where you need to work very quickly and very conveniently and record what's in front of you as it happens, but want to do that in as high a quality as possible in order to keep up with the very demanding standards that all of us face nowadays. The XF705 is a brilliant choice, I think. I think this is one of the most interesting and exciting moves from Canon in recent history. I think they're doing some great stuff at the moment and the XF705 is gonna be such a future-proofed camera. So let me know what you think of this camera down in the comment section down below. And if you've got any questions, make sure to ask them down there and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you want to buy one of these for yourself or any other product for that matter, head over to our website. The link to that is down in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll of course see you in the next one.